Hey everyone, let's talk about how to create a connection between an ASP.NET web application and an Azure database. Hey everyone, my name's Devin and let's do some quick programming to create a connection is create a constant and call it that. Let's go into your web.config folder or file type in connection strings. Inside connection strings, we're going to do an add for name, and you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to call mine test connection. The other thing that we're going to want to do is put in a provider name, and this has to be because we're connecting to a SQL database. It's going to be system.data.sql client. And finally, what we're going to do is add in the connection string. So once you're at this part, we're going to jump over into Azure. And once you're in Azure, pick the database that you want to connect to. I'm going to go ahead and connect to test one. And so I just clicked it to open up the admin. And I'm going to click connection string. This has all your connection strings in it. I'm going to select and copy the ADO.NET connection string and go back into my web config and paste it. It's a fairly lengthy constant, so and um, you will have to edit it a little bit. So in here, you're going to change out the user ID and the password, which is the user ID and password for your database server that your database is running on. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my username and password. Please remember the, this username and password because you'll be using it again in a little bit. And also, if you notice the at the very beginning of the connection string where it says server equals TCP, uh, yada, 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 uh, you want to keep that in mind. In my case, it says YouTube test DB server database windows dot net. Um, I'm going to use that later and I'll show you how. The next thing that we're going to do is right click on our project and go to add and new file. I'm going to name this folder, excuse me, uh, DAL, and that's going to stand for data access layer. And right click on that and go to class. So we're adding a new class and this is going to be your database context. So essentially the connection between your ASP.NET application and your Azure database. So I'm going to name mine test DB context. Once you're inside the database context, it's going to be a pretty small class that we're going to generate. The first thing that we're going to do is create a constructor for the class. For the base, what we're going to do is pass in the string, the name that we created inside the web config. So you just copy and paste it, and it's complaining. It's complaining because I didn't add the parent class. You're going to want to add DB context up here and boom, everything looks fine. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do and the last thing that we're gonna do in this class is create a DB set and you're gonna name it whatever you put your model name as. And so I don't have a model yet, but basically what I'm gonna name mine is test. So I'm gonna just say my model name is test and it's giving me a complaint because I have the angle brackets for a generic, but I don't have a generic in there. So let's go ahead and create a new model. If you right click on the models folder and go to add class, I'm gonna name this test. Not the most original name, but not the worst. Inside here, all I'm gonna do is give it uh, three properties. I'm gonna give it a primary key and I'm gonna call this test ID. The last thing that you have to do in here is above the test ID, because we did not call it ID, Entity Framework will not know what we want our primary key to be. So for that case, we're gonna type in key here and you want the data annotations library key. So once you have that set, we'll be good to go. And the next part that we're gonna do is right click on the project again and go down to Manage NuGet Packages. In here, we're gonna browse for Entity Framework, and you can see I've already installed it, but it doesn't come installed, so go ahead and install it. And once you have it installed, hop back into the DB Context class and type in your generic. So that's the model that you just created. 
The last little bit to get all of this working together is populating the database with some data. To do that, I decided let's make it easy. Go into the home controller, go into the index method. So whenever your application loads the home page, uh, an entry will be made into the database. I'm going to go ahead and edit out the part where I'm actually just typing in all the, the code. Um, just feel free to pause it and follow along at your own speed. All right, so here's all the code. Now let's kind of discuss what each line means. The first line using is C sharp format, and essentially what we're doing is a shortcut for creating a connection with a database. You pass in the database context variable, and then through the magic of Entity Framework and C sharp, we create the connection, and now it's open. So the next part that we're doing is just instantiating a a test object. So that's my model and um, I'm giving it some data. The very last thing that we have to do in order to actually put data into the database is to, the very last thing that we have to do in order to put data into the database is to add our test object that we just created into the test data set that we put into the context. And then there, we just have to basically commit our changes. So I'm gonna to go to ctx.test dot add and just add our model and CTS save changes and when you save changes that's the commit that I was talking about so now whenever I run this all right we see the the basic ASP.NET web app template that you get whenever you create an MVC application I'm gonna hop back into Visual Studio so that was pretty much it that's done. We created the connection and we populated the database. But now we're kind of left with, well, how do I know that my database was populated and how can I do anything with that? So you can and maybe should use Server Explorer and Cloud Explorer to access your database in Azure and you can check out your database there. However, I'd like to use SQL Management Server and it's super easy to use and it's free so you know why not grab it then it's connected you can open up databases the database that you connected to in your connection string and tables you can see that i've got a couple tables i care about the test one because that's the one that i just made so i'm going to go ahead and create a new query oh shocking it actually worked no i'm not really shocked but Sometimes. All right. So we see that our data is now in there. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them below and I will respond. To and if you have any questions but don't want to comment below, go ahead and email at devinchase.me. You're more than welcome to email me. All right. Thanks for watching.